Today we're going to use a behavior tree to have our AI move randomly in the level. So let's jump right into it. If you're wondering why we use a behavior tree instead of just coding everything directly to our AI itself, well, it's because the behavior tree will make the AI think and make their own decision. So by this, we can play certain animation, we can move to certain location, we can react a certain way, and so on. There's so much option to us, so it's why we use a behavior tree, because it's just better all the way around. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to go to our my folder here. We're going to create a few folders. We're going to create one folder for our character that we're going to put in that. So And in the character folder, we'll create a new folder. We're going to call that NPC. And in the NPC, we're going to create a new folder that we're going to call task. So back to the character folder, we're going to create a blueprint class type character. And it's going to be our BP underscore NPC. So here, first, we're going to put the mesh. And we're going to select the mesh many. And we're going to take this one. And we're going to go all the way down here. And we're going to turn it to 90 degrees. If you do not have access to many, well, you're going to have to go to content browser, add, go to add feature. And from there, you can add your third person template and just add to the project and you will have access now to many. So when this is added, we're going to take the animation class that go with it. So ABP many. So now we have the basic animation that go with it. If you're wondering why this color is red, it's because I just changed the two elements right here. So you can double click on this, both of them. You're going to open the material and here under tint, you can change for the color that you wish and you'll be all set and good to go. So we're going to compile this. So now our AI is almost ready. We have a few more things that we have to do. So we're going to do that now. So first we're going to look for the rotation. Well, actually we have to click to the, uh, the top here first. It's going to be better. And uh, now we can write rotation. And we should have access to rotation right here. And here we're going to check this box here. Use controller desired rotation. So if you read, it's just make it more smoothly when we the character is going to rotate. So we're going to check this out by default. And we're going to compile. And the other one in the character movement, uh, sorry, not the character movement, on the character itself, we can search for yaw. And we're going to uncheck this one because we don't use the player controller. We don't need this. So we're just going to uncheck this. We're going to come back to this because we have to do a little thing in it, but we can't do it before doing the other step. So now we have our character right here, ready to go. Now we're going to create the other asset that we need. So we're going to need to create the blueprint and we're going to create an AI and we're going to create the AI controller right here. This is going to be what's going to help our NPC here to take some decisions. So it's going to be very, very simple what we're going to put in this. I'm going to call that AI underscore NPC. And we're going to open it. So in this itself, we're going to go to the event graph. And we're going to have to run our behavior tree. So you see here, run behavior tree. And we're going to have to select our behavior tree from here. So we don't have it yet. So we're going to create that and come back here. So from here, we're going to go to our AI, we're going to do behavior tree, and we're going to call this BP, uh, BT, sorry, underscore NPC. And we need a blackboard that go with it. So we're going to do our blackboard, so BB NPC. And now we're going to go to back to our AI NPC, and now we can select the behavior tree, and we're all set. Now we'll go back to our NPC itself. And we're going to go almost all the way down until we have pound here. And we're going to select our AI NPC that we created. And here I'm just going to change the auto process AI, place in a role or spawn. And I'm going to compile this. So I'm going to go back to the first person map. I'm just going to save everything that we have so far. So now we do have a character. We do have the AI NPC and we have our blackboard and our behavior tree. So we're going to go in the behavior tree itself. Oh, actually before the behavior tree, we have to fix one thing in our character here and it's going to be the animation. 
So we're going to go all the way up here and there's the uh, animation class. So we're going to just browse to it. So we're going to click on this to go all in, to not all in, to go in it. And we're going to move that down here. We're just going to extend this little portion here. And this is for, you know, the acceleration for the movement when we do some input when we're playing this character. However, it's going to be the AI, so we have to do a little modification. So you're going to have to add exactly this. So you're going to try get pound owner. You're going to return, you're going to connect the return value to is the player control, and the return value will go to a select node. So get the select node from here. You're going to connect this to the index. The true will be up here, and the false will go right here. And you should be all set now the AI will be able to use this code. So we can go back here and we're good with this where we can save it. And we're going to go to our NPC and we're gonna go to our behavior tree. So the behavior tree is reading from up, down, and left, right. So from here, we're gonna drive from that and we're gonna get a selector. And from here, we're gonna do a sequence. So we're gonna just click on sequence. From the sequence here, we need to create or move to to the random location. So it's what we're gonna do. So you could do you know task, move to, and all that jazz. So you can use all of that. But we're gonna create a new task up here. And we're gonna create our own task. So I'm just gonna remove that. I'm gonna call that move to a random location, and I'm gonna open it. So now we're in our new task for our behavior tree. So here under function, we have overwrite. So we're gonna click on this and we're gonna take the receive execute AI, which gonna give us access to owner control and control panel, exactly what we need. So from this task, we're doing the logic that we are doing here. It's exactly the logic that we will do in the event graph normally if we were not using a behavior tree. Instead of putting it here, we're just putting it in this task and we're going to go get this task from the behavior tree. So we're going to drag from this and we're just going to do AI move to. And the control pound will go to the pound right here. So from the get control pound, we're going to get the actor location, which is our pound location. So our AI going to drag from the return value and we're going to get random reachable point in range or i should say random reachable point in radius and we're going to connect the radius to the destination right here we're going to promote this to a variable by doing so we're going to be able to edit that on the fly so we're going to click right here and we're all good with that so we're going to keep moving with the code and here the acceptance radius we're going to promote that to a variable as well. And from here on success, on success, yes. So if it succeed, we're gonna drag from that and we're gonna finish our task. So finish the execute right here. And we're gonna make sure that we're checking this box, otherwise it's not gonna work. And on fail, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna finish the execute. However, it's gonna be on check right here. What I would like to see is that I don't want my enemy every time to succeed to go back to another random location right away. I want a certain delay because by putting a certain delay, if you put one second, every one second, I mean every time the patrol is finished, is going to wait one second and the AI will move to another location. However, one second all the time, it's not going to be that good. If you try to do something a little bit more optimized, something that's going to be you know, a little bit more uh, hard for the player to read. So if you drive from duration here, what we can do, we can random float in range and we can promote this variable and this variable. And both of them, we're going to click to instant editable, which is going to help us to change that value in the blackboard itself and blackboard in the behavior tree instead of going back here to that code. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to call that minimum idle AI. I'm going to do the same thing for the max here. So max idle AI. Now we're going to have access to those value. Now we're all good. So what it's doing is that 
when the AI execute this, it's going to get its location with the radius that we decide that the AI is going to go. It's going to go to that location. It's going to wait a certain amount of time that we're going to preset here. And it's going to finish the execute. And if it's fail, it's going to go there. So we're going to go back to our behavior tree. And it's right here that it's going to take place. So we're going to drag from that. We're going to go for a task. And we're going to take the move to random location right here. As you can see here, when you click on this, you don't have access to all of the other variables. So we need to have access to those variables. So like this one here, instant editable. This one here need to be accessible as well, and those two. So we're going to compile, and now if we go back here, now we do have access to all of those variables right here. So instead of going in that all the time to change the value, we can do it from here. So it's a little bit more convenient. So the radius for our patrol, we're going to put 5,000, so it's going to cover the entire map for us. And we're going to have a minimum of 100. And the minimal idle, <laughs> the minimum idle time, we're going to put 0.5 up to two seconds and we're going to save all of that so now it's going to go from here it's going to select this because we only have one sequence it's going to go to this one by default all the time so our task is done so you should have something that looks like this and when this is done we can go back to our game here and we're going to put our npc right there and if you do play Obviously, the NPC is not moving because the NPC need another thing to move, which is our navigation mesh. So we're going to go to volume and we're going to do our navigation mesh right here. And what we're going to do from that, we're going to just make sure that we extend this. That take a certain amount of the map. So we're going to place that something around those line. So that's pretty good like this. And if you press P you should be able to see the green. Now for its reason, my computer, when every time I press P, it's not showing up, but if you press P, you should have something all in green telling you where the AI is able to go. And it'll be all set. So now if you do play, technically you could should see your AI running everywhere. So as you can see now, it's running randomly in the level and it's gonna wait a certain amount of time. So you can see that that's working pretty well. It's how you do your AI to move to a certain location randomly. I will catch you on the other video and we're going to expand on the behavior tree for our AI.